Welcome to Story Hour, a virtual meetup hosted by Wolf and Heron. The floor is yours. Well, they say nothing good happens after midnight. That's an old saying. And uh, for the most part, that's true. But every now and then, something absolutely spectacular does happen after midnight. And um, I know this because after three days of very limited sleep and uh, labor, and uh, at about three in the morning, uh, Ruby came into the world. And thank the God she was Ruby because we didn't have a name for a Frank or a Tom. And uh, my vote was for Thor and that one wasn't going very far. So, <laughs> so Ruby was born and I, a lot happens right then at the birth. Like there's a ton going on, not just the emotional stuff, but nurses running around and there's doctors and there's the mother-in-law and the best friend. And, and, uh, and within minutes there's Ruby on a scale, just like six pounds of just like, absolute frail perfection and she like turned her head and looked at me like open eyes looked at me and I know she couldn't see me uh because you know they just don't have visual at that point but like she looked at me and it's it's a image that's just just burned like into your brain and everything all that stuff that was going on just like just didn't exist just floated away and I realized like right then I, I realized it was like a whole new chapter in my life of first. And, and also for this little person, like this is all the first, right? You know, she gets to go through all these tiny little things and, and we're going to kind of go through it together. And I also realized right then I was like, wow, I've got, I got a big job. I have a very specific job and it wasn't being a financial winner it wasn't being like giving her stuff and it wasn't being like the perfect and all-knowing parent or anything like that it was just it was just being present being a secure and able adult for this person this new person who's going to do all through these new things and and those things translated over the years into like one time i was uh it just gotten done with a weekend road trip and it was tired, probably put in about 300 miles that day and just got home late afternoon on a Sunday and I get a phone call and, and it's Ruby. And I could tell she's, she's just holding it together. She's about 13 years old at this point and 12, 13 years old. And, and she's, and I could tell in her voice, like something's all right. She's like, dad, I, I can't find mom. She's on the mountain somewhere. And, and I just started my period and I don't have any tampons and, 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 and Finn broke up with me, you know, and I'm like, I'm like, oh boy, you know, so what do you do? Right. You're tired. You just got home. Well, you know, what you do is you jump in your truck and you drive the seven miles into town and on your way, you ask for a picture of what you need to get at the grocery store, because for all you dudes, once you go to that aisle, you have you don't realize how many options there are. Okay. So you get a picture exactly what you need. And then you go to the freezer section and you get a pint of ice cream, <laughs> Ben and Jerry's preferably with all the really cool shit in it. And you go over to your ex-wife's house and you sit down on the couch with a couple spoons and, and you do your job. That's what you do. So that's it. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> hey Bart, thank you for sharing your story. No worries. Okay, what should Bart hold on to? What was powerful or compelling about that story? I just I found it moving and authentic through and through. Um, just all the little details you sprinkled in about her name. That like everyone who's a parent relates to those conversations you have about names and uh, people overriding and vetoing each other on occasion, <laughs> and uh, just the 
Um, it was simple and it was obviously told from the heart and I enjoyed the whole thing. So. I have to say from, from seeing it, uh, hearing it last time, Bart, that you definitely did uh, like the essentials of the story did not change, which is I think good because we appreciated the story for some of the same reasons that John already mentioned. But in terms of creating more of a scene that you're bringing us into um, and these moments, both that scene on the scale and even much more so actually, I feel like we're able to build out the, you know, like the grocery store <laughs> and the pieces <laughs> of that, um, you really were able to bring this journey to life with, with like, it's just two small moments. Um, but you were, you were able to bring us into this relationship that you have with your daughter. So good job on, on integrating some of that feedback and playing that out. I think that it worked. Thanks. Anything else that Stephanie, that you would add just based on the. Yeah. Well, listening or Sarah that you noticed. Uh, I think there's something kind of powerful about the the subject matter of you know your second moment with your daughter. This idea of like being 13 and like going through all the sort of girl teenage angst that girls go through and being the father. I think is just there's some interesting gender dynamics that are playing out that make the story you know, especially compelling. Um, and so I think, you know, it's just like, there's something about the sort of the awkwardness of all of it that's going on that like makes your father daughter relationship come to life um, in a really, really compelling way. So, so I just, I, I don't know. I, I, I liked the fact that you picked that particular moment as opposed to some other moment where I'm, cause I'm sure there's thousands where you're like, you know, as you said, there for her. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just, it's, and the one thing I left out was that I miss was about the ice cream. Is it really as a single like, dude, dad? That's all I got. That's all I got. Hey, it works though. It's exactly what's needed in these moments. <laughs> <laughs> what else it was it was just very sweet and seemed very sincere and um i'm gonna kind of piggyback on stephanie's like i like that you kind of mimic that the that concept of awkwardness a few times through the story with the um the um the chaos in the delivery room of the the mother-in-law slash slash best friend slash doctor slash chaos and then you know the the naming the thor that was it was just funny um and then you know the the tampon and, and ice cream moment that was nice that that sort of theme carried on but it was still i mean it made it funny but it was still very sweet and sincere mm -hmm. yeah. what did you feel bart in sharing it that second time did you notice anything different um uh, yeah i mean i like the um Drilling down on the, on the, on the, you know, the, like you said, the awkwardness of, of being like, you know, single uh, parent, especially, you know, ended up single parent with a, you know, with a, uh, with a daughter and like diving into that a little bit, like you're saying with the awkwardness and then tying in the second story. Cause like when I first told this, I didn't tie it back to the second story that wasn't in there of, of her at 13 years old and that whole thing. That wasn't, it was, I went more into a more, I ended it with how if just saying how much kids change your life and that's just the reality and it's okay. And you just move forward rather than giving a specific example. So moving that in there, I think, I think really helped for sure. <sighs> All right. What what about some ideas for Bart? If you were to tell this a third time, what could he experiment with? Or John and Sarah, because you didn't hear the first one, what you know would you suggest he swing back in any way? Or do you have any other 
ideas or feedback for him for next time. One thing I didn't uh, touch on is I really liked how on the very, at the very end, you switched to the second person when you said, you know, so what do you do? You drive to the store or whatever. I don't remember exactly how you put it, but you could you go up to your web, your ex, your ex's house and you sit down on the couch with your daughter and you eat ice cream, you know, like I liked the way you switched from um, first person to second person there at the very end. Uh, and then, okay, as far as one opportunity, maybe it's not going to make the story that much better, but you can use metaphor to enhance the kind of humor and awkwardness. And like, so off the cuff, um, you talk about like, if you go down that aisle and you don't know exactly what you're looking for, uh, you'll end up running up and down the aisle like a frightened hare. Something like that might have made it and added a touch of humor to it, but it was already funny. It was already super relatable and, and touching. So just an idea. It's, it's more of a, um, the, instead of a frightened hare, it's more of just a stun. <laughs> is what it is. <laughs> like, I didn't know. <laughs> just had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> stunned i have you know when i was when i was 16 17 i worked as a cashier at a grocery store and the my favorite was always being in the express line because i would get men coming in to buy three things and invariably it would be something like you know adult diapers baby food and like an avocado right <laughs> or like you know <laughs> like you know period <laughs> supplies and ice cream it was that kind of thing and and very and i always found it funny because there were there were very often the dudes who would come with with the old packaging and it had somehow changed like they had they had changed the branding somehow or something and they'd be like is this the same is this the same they'd ask me these questions and i was just like oh poor soul poor soul (laughs) it's all it's all it's all hard enough (laughs) <laughs> I literally like ask people like, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> what is um, cool about that though, is in addition to you telling a story that's personal to you, you're like, that is an example I think of revealing something that makes you feel vulnerable in the moment, which is part of what makes great stories. So I think it's cool that you leaned into that. Thanks. As an idea, Bart, you know, and and listening to this version of the story, it made me like, I feel like it revealed more. And then I also wanted it to reveal even more. And so again, I don't know if this would necessarily make it more influential, but some of the things that are running through my mind now are, um, I'm wondering who you were before your daughter because you describe like the importance or your role, how you identify your role as, as just being there for her. And then the example shows us that were you unreliable <laughs> before and are you, and, or are you unreliable to other people, but you will always be there for your daughter. Like that juxtaposition might be interesting in the context of, of this moment as a transformation and as a change, uh, it might, overburden the story and be too much, but that's something um, that I would consider. And then additionally, so this, like describing the, um, the moment in the store and like you described that detail by detail and I can totally visualize it, but I think it would be a little bit interesting if you brought in more of your inner world in that moment of like, what are you saying to yourself or <laughs> what, what is your heart doing? Like, are you sweating while you're in the grocery store? Um, or are you like calm and collected? And I would think about some of those emotions that were, you were feeling and how they serve to show that this is like you. Um, and I don't know if this is true, but like, this is like you fighting 
a monster in order to just like be there for your daughter, basically. Like you're working, like you're, you'll do whatever you need to do, even if it makes you uncomfortable. So like bringing in some of those, those elements and making them more visceral will further reinforce this idea that like you'll do whatever she needs you to do. And on one hand, it's simple. Like all she needs is ice cream and tampons. And on the other hand, you have to go get ice cream and tampons um, <laughs> and disregard everything else. So um, that's something I would consider. I don't know. I don't know how far to go into it, but um, you know, again, just bringing us more into the internal world. Okay. That's a good idea. I like that. Yeah, that could be fun. Any other thoughts for part? I think there is a lot of drama in your internal world that you imply, but don't really explicitly state. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, I kind of agree with you, Kara, that there's some, there's some experimentation to, to play around with there uh, in terms of just like making your implications more explicit. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Bert. And thank Thanks. you everyone for your awesome. feedback. Visit wolfandheron.com to find out more about our story hours. <laughs>